Good afternoon, everyone. I really don't want to start a pity party, but sometimes it's difficult being a preacher. It really can be very difficult, isn't that right, Deacon Rob? It's difficult to preach sometimes, most especially when the words of the gospel are hard words, challenging words. Today, our Lord tells us in the 18th chapter of St. Matthew, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault. Ever try doing that? You know how difficult that is. He says, between you and him alone. But then our Lord continues. He says, if he listens to you, you've won over your brother. If he doesn't, take one or two others along with you. And if he still doesn't listen to you, tell the church. Our Lord is telling us about fraternal correction, it's called. When we see something wrong in our brother or sister and being concerned enough about their spiritual life, their eternal salvation in some instances, to tell them, to correct them. Now, as our Lord will also say, you know, we have to take care of the beam in our own eye before we look at the splinter in someone else's. That's very true. Nevertheless, we are our brother's keeper, our sister's keeper. We need to help each other along the road to holiness, including warning them about their own faults. It's a very hard lesson to learn and to live and also to preach about. Some believers today tend to think that they have no right to intervene in the private lives of their fellow believers, especially relatives and friends. So they pay no heed to the serious obligation that our Lord is talking about in today's gospel of encouraging an erring brother or sister to give up their sinful ways. But let me ask you, if someone was physically running toward the edge of a cliff, Would you just say, it's none of my business? Why should I be concerned? Most especially if you knew someone that you loved and they were literally running toward the end of a cliff not knowing it was there or not fully appreciating how deep the hole was. Would you really say, I'm not going to say anything at all? No, of course not. Out of love, we ought to warn the person look out. And out of love, we need to warn others, especially when we see objectively serious fault. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. You know, there's a story about a priest and a deacon who were standing outside of church one Sunday. And the deacon, being a good deacon that he was, was holding up a sign that said, pull in here and turn yourself around. Catchy phrase. And the priest was out on the sidewalk waving people from the street into the parking lot. Well, suddenly, a gentleman pulled up in his car, stopped, and angrily rolled down his window, and he said this, Why don't you religious fanatics leave us alone? And he rolled up his window and sped off. A moment later, they heard the screeching of brakes and a big splash. And so the priest turned to the deacon and said, Maybe that sign should simply say, Bridge out ahead. Love means warning people. Warning people of pending doom. Most especially someone that we love and might in fact be putting their own eternal salvation in jeopardy. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. We hear this also in our first reading. The prophet Ezekiel hears this word from the Lord. He says, If 
I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt, but I, the Lord, will hold you responsible for his death. What is the Lord revealing to us? That we are each other's keeper. That we ought to care enough about someone else, not just for their physical welfare, but most especially for their spiritual welfare. And this is a hard lesson to hear and to preach about. Have we offered advice, you and I? Have we offered encouragement, you and I, especially to our family members and our friends and our neighbors and our co-workers, when it was needed? And lovingly, when it's needed, in private, to correct wherever necessary. It's not easy. But how many people do we know that, for instance, are living together before they're married and we don't say anything to them? How many people do we know and care about and are constantly overindulging in alcohol and we don't say anything to them out of love? How many people do we know who might be stealing from their place of business, living a grandiose style of life and not sharing with those in need, marrying outside of the church, not even coming to church, and we don't speak to them? We don't warn them. We don't, out of love, try to correct them. Now I know what people say. It says, who am I? Yeah, who are any of us? We all are guilty. And that's sometimes the best way to begin the conversation. I'm guilty as you are. We have to notice the plank in our own eye first before, Jesus says, we take the splinter out of our brother's eye. But we still have to take that splinter out. We still have to care enough about the spiritual welfare of those, especially those we love. I think we can all admit that to a great degree, when indifference is shown toward religion, especially among our young people, it's because parents haven't corrected them. If the children of good Christian families grow up as practical pagans, maybe the family has not been so good. But just the opposite is true as well. In a very secularized society, when we see young people really responding to the faith, it's because they've had parents that have cared enough to keep them on the straight and narrow path. That takes courage, parents. It does. That takes courage, grandparents. Yes, it does. But you are concerned enough about your own children and grandchildren to correct them when they need it, knowing that we all need correction. Indeed, my brothers and sisters, it's a hard lesson to learn, but it's a lesson of love. Does not St. Paul tell us in that second reading from his letter to the Romans, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. And one sure way that we can show our love for one another is to indeed follow the advice that our Lord gives us. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother, your sister. These are hard words. But some Sunday, you happen to see the deacon out in the parking lot with a big sign, and you see me waving you in. Please don't yell at us. But just remember, we all need a warning. We are all guilty. We all need to help one another along the road to holiness especially to practice fraternal correction.